artists along the Golden Road experience the Northwest through its art and the artists who live here. Northwest artists are passionate about art, and Golden Road Arts extends their passion through education. We're on an arts mission, introducing children to art. Welcome, and this is Barbara Mason. I'm with Golden Road Arts, and today we're going to do a printmaking project for your class that um, is very easy to do for the children, and the supplies are very readily available, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So the first thing that we need to make this project work is we need a piece of cardboard. So this is just a piece of uh, mat board that I got from my local um, frame shop. Oftentimes they'll give you uh, the centerpieces from mats that are too small for them to use. They just uh, stack them up and eventually, I don't know, maybe recycle them. But if you go in and tell them you're a teacher, they're always very, very willing to give you um, stuff that they don't need. And of course it's something that you can use. So on this I've glued a few things. Um, I've got some uh, corrugated cardboard here. This is very thin corrugated cardboard, and then I've got some thicker cardboard that maybe came from a box. So you can only have things so thick when you're doing this. So I have a couple of uh, layers of paper here that I've glued down. And, um, and when I work with little children, like uh, younger grades, um, I use string because string is something easy for them to um, deal with. And you don't. this is probably about the thickest string that you can use. This is a piece of twine. You want um, actual, um, maybe just cotton cord or even uh, knitting yarn will work. So you can do two or three different kinds and uh, different, different lengths. And then with the little kids, what I have them do, um, glue with little kids is really a mess. Uh, they just get it everywhere. So the thing I have them do is I just have them use tape. So I have them tape their, um, take their piece of um, yarn or string and I just have them glue it down because um, with a piece of tape. So now it's down, and when this is printed, you'll hardly see the tape. So we have all of these things um, attached here. This is just some fancy paper that I had in my studio. Not real sure where that came from, but um, very fancy paper, and I'm just going to use it for this. Now what we, what we want to do to make this work, um, we have um, our printmaking plate, and we're going to cover this with um, tin foil. So what happens is when, after you've glued things down, um, I've used the um, Elmer's glue or Uru glue. These are just sticky glues. Any kind of glue will work. A tacky glue is fine. We're going to take a piece of aluminum foil. It's a little bit bigger than our plate. And we're going to um, lay it over the top of the plate like this. And then we're going to fold it around the back. And then we'll just fold the edges over. You want to get it down pretty tight. You don't want to have any big uh, sloppy edges, so get it down pretty tight. And then we'll just tape it down. Because if you don't tape it down, it could come off. We don't want it to come off. So we'll do that end, and then we're going to do this end. Fold it down nice and tight. Put a piece of tape to hold it. Okay. So I have done this particular um, process many, many times with many, many classes. And one of the things that you can do, now you see when I push this down, I don't know if you can actually see this, because of the shine on this, but all of these things that are raised up that are a little bit higher than the background are going to show. Um, you can see my string here really shows. It's probably maybe a little too high for this. A little bit you can see the tape, the paper, um, a little bit for my background. And you can really see these, this corrugated cardboard. That comes through very well. And another thing that I have done, I've done a very similar process with this with a piece of, um, a piece of plastic but you could certainly use a piece of cardboard. And I have just um, made my image using um, masking tape. So um, if you put masking tape on um, an image, you can make your image. Here's one that I've done that looks like a, um, I think this is a Native American image, maybe a petroglyph. So you can, you, you can make it out of it, masking tape and then you can put the foil over it and print it exactly the same way that we're going to um, print our foil here. 
So one of the things that we can do to get color on this, we can use um, water-soluble markers. Everything that we put on here has to be water-soluble. We can use these crayons. These crayons are, um, they are water-soluble, so they'll release. And you want to be careful when the children are doing this that they don't tear the foil. So you have to um, remind them that they can't, they can't push so hard that they tear the foil. You just want to get the color on there. And then what we're going to do to get this to work is we're going to print this with a damp piece of paper. And because these are water soluble, all of the color is, that's on here of these crayons is going to come off. And of course, it doesn't matter what color you do. Um, children like lots of color, and they'll use every color that's available. There's no right way or wrong way to do this. And the other thing that you can use besides these water-soluble crayons are these um, washable markers. And um, I was very excited when I first tried these and found that they worked because, um, I don't know, it just seems like, it seems like they, that it should work because it was water-soluble, but I was pretty darn excited when it did. So we're going to do a little blue there. Maybe we'll get a little pink. And we can see which of these things, uh, which of these things print the best. When you're doing this, you have to make sure that um, you have something that's going to stick to the foil. So if you use watercolor, of course, it's not going to stick. It's going to come right off. Um, maybe poster paint would work. I haven't tried poster paint, but that might work. Get a little orange here, get a little more color on here. So you can see that our some of these work better than others and are better colors than others. That's a pretty wimpy looking orange. But you get the general idea. Now the other thing that you can do is you can put um, actually put some printmaking ink on this. This is um, Speedball Water Soluble Printmaking Ink. And I'm just going to put a little bit of it out here, and we will um, roll a little bit out and roll it over our print. Um, this um, ink dries very quickly, so you don't have very much time. You can reconstitute a little bit with a little water. And any, you can just roll this out on your counter or on your table. And then um, if you find that you go to clean your table and you say, oh my gosh, it's blue, I can't get the blue off, um, it comes off really well with soft scrub. So we're just going to hit the top of this. We don't want to make our whole thing blue, but we'll just... So because I'm just barely doing this, what's happening is I'm just picking up the um, really high spots on here. So now in order to make this work, I need to have a piece of damp paper. And the best paper for this, of course, is paper that's designed to um, do this, printmaking paper. But I understand that in your classroom, printmaking paper is pretty darn expensive for you to be using with kids. And so I'm going to, um, I'm going to use some um, paper that really is not printmaking paper. It came in a package of construction paper. And um, it isn't as heavy as the regular construction paper. It actually felt more just like um, computer paper. So I'm actually going to use a, pa uh, a piece of paper that was um, pink rather than the paper that was white because the white paper just uh, didn't look like it was going to do much. So in order to have this paper um, wet, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it with water and then I'm going to blot it on a bath towel so that um, it's wet but it's pretty quickly wet. You know paper will fall apart when it gets wet so you have to be fast. So we're going to get it wet and then we're going to just take our bath towel and we're going to blot it, and then we're going to lay it over the top of our, wet enough? I don't know, maybe I'll give it another shot here. We're going to put it over the top of our, that looks pretty wet. We're going to lay it over the top of our masterpiece, and then we're going to put a piece of wax paper over it. And uh, the only job that the wax paper has is to um, keep the paper from falling apart. Kids get pretty enthusiastic when they print, and paper is not um, 
It's not cloth, and if you um, abuse it too much, it'll fall apart. So we're going to do that. And then I have here a piece of felt that I just bought actually this morning at the fabric store. And um, we're going to lay that over the top of it. And we're going to take our printmaking tool, which is, um, of course, a rolling pin. And we're going to start rolling. You want to start rolling in the middle, push to the edges. And it doesn't hurt to go both ways. Up, back. I always tell the kids that they can uh, push this to China if they like. Want to get your corners really good. So the idea is to um, print this without the paper moving. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rolling pin and I'm going to print it one more time without the felt because the felt is pushing it, the paper down around our um, stuff that's built up. But when you do it without the felt, you're just going to get the surface, the higher parts. OK, so let's see how this printed. Did it print amazing? Oh my gosh, pretty amazing. Look at that. I'd be pretty happy with that if I was. Uh, in the fourth, fifth, or sixth grade, maybe even the third grade, maybe even the first and second grade if you're real adventurous. So I'm going to put a little more ink on this, and we're going to try to print it with a different paper because um, so these are more of these water soluble crayons. I'm going to try this orange and see if I get good orange. So what printed really well? These didn't print as good as I had hoped they would. You know, it's all a learning uh, process, art. You can't do it wrong, but some things definitely work better than others. So the pink worked pretty well. Let's try that pink. Oh, here's kind of a purpley pink. Let's try, oh, that's a nice color. Get an orange here. So the, the, the paper that I'm going to use next is a, um, it's a printmaking paper, and it's called Masa, and it's very inexpensive. You can get um, a really big sheet of this for a dollar. Now, a dollar seems like quite a bit. If you're teaching little kids, you know, every time you turn around, it's a dollar for this and a dollar for that. And um, I feel pretty strongly that teachers shouldn't be having to buy this stuff. Okay, now we're going to get just a little bit of blue on top of this. So this paper has a smooth side and a rough side, and you want to print on the smooth side. It's real easy to, it's real easy to um, print on the wrong side. Um, the rough side isn't really designed to hold ink. The smooth side is, so you want to make sure you get it on the smooth side. And again, we're going to get it wet. We're going to spray it real good here. And you know what happens when you're spraying is kids want to spray each other. So you want to remind them that if they spray their neighbor, their neighbor will be mad, and you will be madder. So it's very important for them to only spray the paper. I don't have a whole lot of trouble with that um, happening, but it certainly can. Now we're going to blot this, just like we did the other paper. And we're going to lay it down over our print, our plate. Again, we're going to use our wax paper and our piece of felt and our printing tool, of course, which is our rolling pin. I actually want to print one of these that I did with the um, tape so that you can see how that prints. So 
So we'll do that next. We'll put a little piece of foil over it and print it. And again, the, the um, wax paper is to protect the back of your paper. And sometimes kids get things too wet and they press so hard that it actually will come through the paper. And we don't want our felt to be all discolored because um, you, know, you want to keep using that piece of felt over and over again. So you, want it, you don't want it to get wet. You don't want it to be damaged. OK, here we go. Did this print any better? Oh, yeah, that actually printed better than the construction paper. So you can see, look at how much more um, information we got there than we got with our construction paper. So the type of paper you use for this really does matter. You can um, get actual printmaking paper. There's a paper called Reeves Lightweight, which works very, very well, but it's expensive. You know, um, anytime you get printmaking paper, it costs a lot of money. Let's do our two our two headed. I think it's a two headed. Uh, not sure. Maybe an eagle. Anyway, we'll put a piece of foil over that and print it. Um, this is a petroglyph that came from uh, the central part of the United States, maybe close to the southwest, but maybe more central. So we're just going to cover it with a foil. And again, we're going to turn it over, fold the foil down on the back. piece of tape on it. You know, if you don't use a little piece of tape, what happens is the kids get halfway done and everything falls apart. And uh, they get pretty upset if they're, if they're working and what they're working with falls apart. We don't like that to happen. OK, so our foil is down. So now if you rub this with your hands, you can kind of see your, I don't know if the light will catch that, if you can see the image here. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you can rub it with your hands. You can see it a little bit. So we can, again, take some of our washable markers. Um, I think I'll use the pink, since I've got blue ink out there. So as I'm doing this across, and, there, and, and again, there's no right way or wrong way to do this. Kids are, um, they're very, very um, inventive. And the fact, that, the fact that you have a fair amount of time to print this, you can actually put the, put the um, marker on here, put the crayon on here, and not print it till the next day. Because um, um, this ink will dry up. But even this ink, you can wait till the next day to print it. So it, um, it's very forgiving. Whenever you can wait overnight to do something, it's good. Ooh, this is pretty. We got a bright green here. Doesn't seem to like the red, though. It's all right. We'll go around the edges. OK, so now I'm going to roll the um, blue on. Well, my blue is kind of drying up here. But I'm going to be very, very, I'm just going to use the weight of the roller. I'm hardly going to touch the blue to it. Oh, I'm going to have to touch it more than that because I don't have any blue. We're going to have to reconstitute this a little bit. So this ink is truly water soluble. You can just add a little water to it, mix it back up again. So it's very, very good to clean up. And just because it's water soluble doesn't mean it won't stain your clothes. You know, they try to make everything as um, safe for kids as possible. But, um, you know, you don't want to send your kids home with uh, blue all over their clothes. So um, an apron's probably a good idea. OK, so now we've got a little blue there. We can't even see that. I don't know if that's going to print very well. Well, we'll see. It's always embarrassing to be doing a demonstration and have nothing turn out. So we'll give this a shot with um, the real printmaking paper, which is right here. This is a, um, 
This is a paper that's very, very strong. It's called Reeves Lightweight Paper. You can um, put this in a tub of water and leave it even overnight and it won't fall apart. You know, what I tell the children is this, is, this paper is made out of 100% um, cotton rag. And so I say, do you know where cotton comes from? And there's always someone in the class they will say, sheep. Well, that's close, but that's actually wool. So cotton comes from plants and um, they pick it. It's great big puff balls. That's why they call the, the big white balls that you get. Um, you can buy them in a sack sometimes in the grocery store. Your mom uses them to take her makeup off with. Um, it, those are, they call them cotton balls because they look like actual cotton balls. So they take that cotton and they wash it really good and they stretch it out and they eventually wa um, weave it into paper. And so they're great big mills that um, squish it down and make it into paper. It comes out in big sheets. But you can imagine doing all that work that it's pretty expensive to make this paper. And um, again, one side is smooth, one side is rough. And so you want to print on the smooth side. And it's kind of hard to tell. You kind of have to close your eyes and feel it, which side is the smooth side. And, um, and again, as I said, because this paper is made out of cotton, you could actually put this paper in a tub of water and leave it for a few days. Now, eventually it's going to mold, but um, in a couple of days that's not going to happen. And so you can see that the advantage of using this paper is you could have it damp and um, take it out, blot it on your towels, and, um, and print with it. Um, one sheet of this paper that is about, let's see, it's about... 30 by 40, so it's a pretty good sized piece of paper, but it costs about $4, so it's very expensive. Some schools have budgets for this, some schools don't. So that's why I want to show this on other papers that um, are not so expensive. But you know, if you, use the, if you use the best supplies, you're going to get the best results. It's just... So again, I'm going to spray this really well. And then we're going to blot it on our towel. So we don't want it to be dripping with water because if it's dripping with water, wherever there's big shiny spots, you want it to be dull. If you see big shiny spots of water, then probably in that spot you're going to get a hole. It's probably not going to print real well in that spot. So again, we're going to take our piece of wax paper, lay it down over the top, and our piece of felt, and our printing tool. This is our portable printing press here. It works pretty well. So now we're going to peel this off. And if everything worked well, we should see our image. And you can see that we do. Even though that was just a thin little piece of masking tape underneath the felt, you can actually see those birds with the two heads, one going one way, one going the other way. So um, it's pretty amazing how this uses so little material. It's such a simple process. And um, it comes out pretty good. So I encourage you to do this with your class. It's very, very easy, very fast, and um, doesn't use very many materials. So again, this is Barbara Mason from Golden Road Arts. Thanks for joining me today. And um, I hope these videos are going to be really helpful to you in your classroom. Mm -hmm.